Hello, it's been a long time since I've recorded a tutorial, but here we go. So today, um, the, and this, to start with, this is only um, good for revision 26 of Cinema 4D or forward. One of the great things that happened with Maxon acquiring ZBrush is that Cinema 4D has integrated ZBrush's remeshing tool into Cinema 4D. So we can take a mesh that looks like this, which if you've ever attempted to texture or UV unwrap something that you've made in the volume builder, you know is a total nightmare. Um, and we're going to be able to convert this to a much more useful mesh um, that's lower polygon. And um, you know, in addition to making things easier to unwrap, we can also use the remesher to create smooth, low poly lower polygon versions of our models that we can then bring into Unity or other video game engines as a much more lower polygon model. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start with, I just have this file that I created. It's just a, a poor capsule headed guy. There's not a whole lot um, to it, but if you aren't familiar with the volume builder, you should check out the tutorial I have on that. You should, or check out other tutorials as well. There's plenty of great tutorials on how to use the volume builder out there. Um, but what the volume builder does is it allows you to take a bunch of objects and um, put them together. So if I uncheck that, you can see that I've just got a capsule, a uh, capsule nose, a couple spheres, this deformed um, capsule that I stretched before I deformed it and then made editable, um, and another sphere that makes this chin. And so the volume builder allows you to merge all of those together. Now you'll notice there's these seams here, and that's actually because um, one of the things the volume builder is doing is for two of these items, you'll see down here in the um, in this hierarchy in the when I have the volume builder selected, you'll see that um, these two eyes are being subtracted, and then I just have another copy here that fills in the hole, right? So I will be, you know, dealing with the eyes separately. Those are something where I might want to do a texture on their own. It makes it a lot easier to deal with if I want them to move back and forth, right? And not be part of this, you know, a uniform part of this, um, this object that gives me the freedom to do that. Now, conversely, if I knew the eyes weren't going to move, um, or have any sort of animation, I could always integrate this in and have them just be part of the face. But I might need to do a little bit of special work to get those, those harder edges around the eyes. Um, just something to note, the reason I left this bend in here is because right, you can always keyframe things and animate them using this. Now, <laughs> this wouldn't necessarily work right because of the way the bend deformer is set up, um, but we could potentially do a couple pose morphs of this one object um, and then um, have it animate between those two things. Um, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, I can leave all of these objects in a state that makes them pretty easy to work with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that so the mustache is in the right place. So I've got this, um, and again, with the volume builder, um, Right, it creates all these little tiny voxels. Um, but if I was to render this right now, it has no mesh. So, right, there's nothing there. And I need what's called a volume mesher, um, which I've renamed a head mesh here in order to right, make that something that will render to the screen. So that's like a quick intro to that. Let's go ahead and turn the eyes back on. Um, and so I've got this head mesh. Now, right, ideally we want far fewer polygons on here in order to make this functional. Now, prior to R26, there's several versions um, of Cinema 4D that have a remesher. However, it does strange things. And the remesher that we've got in R26 still has that, that old default setting. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna come over here where the subdivision surface is. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna go to this remesh. And with Remesh selected, you'll see that I have several options here. I'm going to switch this back from Z Remesher, which is the one we're going to use, to Instant Mesh. This is the old version. And we're going to go ahead and drop this head mesh in here. And you'll see it turns blue, and it tells us that it's doing some work in the background. 
Okay, so this is the issue with Cinema 4D's old remesher, is that you get all of these triangles that pop up, right? It tries to make these uniform quads, um, and then wherever there's an issue with that, it inserts a triangle. And though this is better, it still makes um, uh, texture mapping and UV unwrapping and all of that kind of a total nightmare. And it's not the standard if you ever look at, like, say, you know, heads that have been sculpted or whatever, right? Usually people, when they retopologize those or remesh those, um, they want uniform um, pixels that have symmetry along the, you know, along the nose. Um, and this is not the case at all. Um, we could reduce the number in this. We could reduce the mesh density, but we're still going to have kind of the same issues. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch over to Z Remesher. Now this might take a second to do. Um, and this is something to note uh, while we wait for that process to complete. If you're doing something, if you've like found some really cool tutorials on how to use a noise field in, a, um, in the volume builder to create really crazy, like intricate, like 3D noise um, shapes, um, I haven't let Remesher go long enough, but it it kind of stalls out at like 22% on my computer um, when it's trying to do something that has like multiple polygon islands and things that it, it just doesn't, I don't know if it fails or if I'm just impatient, but I haven't had it actually succeed doing that. So there is a limit on what you can and cannot remesh effectively with this. Okay, so we've got this. So first we're at our full density and I want you to see that, you know, they're, these are all, they're not quite uniform. It's kind of weird that this is here, but we do have um, a much, much better mesh. Now there are some issues over here um, and I'm not, uh, honestly, I was trying to fix them. It's something to do with how the mustache is applied. And so one thought I had that we might as well try now is if I go to the volume builder, um, you'll see that I have my, where's my, oh, I have this capsule. This is my mustache. It is above, and so is this eye too. These are both above this smooth. And the smooth is just a filter that smooths things. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these down below the smooth and see if that fixes that issue. Now, again, of course, it's gonna take a little bit for it to remesh. Okay, so that fixed the issue, right? So that was just an issue with where there was a problem with smoothing. Now, when we go and we reduce the number of polygons on this, um, we're not gonna have too many problems. But at this point, you can see there is an issue here as well. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and reduce these polygons and see if we get a cleaner mesh. Okay, so let's go back to our remesh. And I don't know if I said it, but right, we just make the, the um, the head mesh, a child of the remesh, in order to get it to work. So I'm going to reduce my polygon or my mesh density to um, 50%. And so while that's working, there's a couple modes here. We can either do mesh density and then just set it as a percentage of the mesh density, or we can do polygon count. Um, so you can see I've gotten larger polygons. Some of those issues have gone. You'll notice it's still a little bit wonky up here in terms of how this is applying to the surface. Um, but let's go ahead and before we do anything further down the line to fix that, we're going to go ahead and click on polygon count instead. And again, we'll wait. This takes a little bit longer. But you'll notice by default the polygon count is 2,000. And this is looking substantially more like a usable unwrappable mesh, right? When you have really high mesh um, density and you try to unwrap those things, um, in Cinema 4D, um, most of the tools break when you try, even if when you do the cuts and everything, um, or it takes forever and um, it's kind of a nightmare. This is a much cleaner mesh. However, it is still not symmetrical. What we'd really like in this case, the way I've modeled this, is for the, the mesh to be symmetrical along the, uh, across the Z axis. So if I come down here to the very bottom and there's these three things, there's symmetric X, Y, and Z. If I check mark symmetric Z, it's gonna redo this again. Um, I do love that while it's working, you can do other things. 
And so now you'll see that because I have my head on the center line, the right as and I did not move these objects or move my model off the center off z being zero for for any of these um, elements of my uh, volume builder. I now have this symmetrical line that splits the mesh in half, which is totally incredible. It wasn't that long ago that in order to get a high quality um, mesh like this after you'd sculpted in Cinema 4D, you had to go through and hand retopologize this by using the snap tools and the polygon pen tool to create all of these by hand. And now we have this wonderful tool that can help us out immensely. Now, if you're using, you know, even if you're working with objects that aren't uniform, I made like a, uh, like a, um, like an ice cream swirl the other day and was able to at least reduce that polygon count substantially um, and clean things up and make it much easier to do uh, texturing on at a later time, even though it didn't necessarily need to be um, symmetrical, it worked out really well that way. So this is a pretty great tool. And from here, um, we can go ahead and save our work. Um, and if you wanted to at this point, right, the next step, if you weren't going to be animating this um, or doing any further work, um, we could go ahead and make this object editable um, and then create our UVs. Um, uh, you know, unwrap this, which we'll talk, at least in my series, we'll talk about UV unwrapping in a future tutorial. You can also find other tutorials on that. Uh, but we can unwrap this mesh, texture it, and, and do whatever we'd like to with it. Um, if I need, so, so there's one final thing, um, right? I talked about how we could potentially make, um, if we needed different versions of our models. If you're if you've ever been um, trying to develop assets for um, for a th for a video game engine, so Unity, Unreal, um, whatever you're using, um, there's something there's a concept called LOD or level of detail, and what that is is it's a um, it's basically like you have a package or a group of several different copies of your of your asset. So in this case, it'd be this weird capsule head. Um, and each one, the level of detail you have, at the start of the level of detail, you have the highest level of detail, and then you create a copy of that that's got significantly fewer polygons, and then a copy of that that's got fewer polygons, and then maybe something for like, if it's way in the distance, it's just like you'd rendered out a PNG of the object and you slap that on a single quad off in the distance. Um, and that would be your, your lowest level of detail. And what this does is, what it does is it allows you to set how far away you are um, from the camera is going to determine which model is going to be used in that case. So this means you don't, you know, you don't need 10,000 polygons on an object that's like a thousand units away from the camera, right? But when you're really close to the camera, you may want a much higher density mesh. Um, and so you can use the remesher to maybe make multiple copies of this, have one that's got a thousand polygon count, one that's got 2,000, one that's got maybe 6,000 if you're like really getting close to this, this head if you need it. Um, and then, um, and so you could have three copies of this and use the remesher to cleanly make a new copy of each. And so if I put this at um, 1,000, <laughs> not 100, but if I put this at 1,000, we're probably going to lose some of the detail on um, some of these parts. But you can see it's reduced the, that polygon count even a little bit more. Now, one thing to note is when it does do this, if we have this adaptiveness set, what that means is wherever there's more... Um, where the geometry bends more sharply, we're going to have, it's going to adapt to that. If I crank this up to 100%, and we'll just see how this goes, right? You can see there's significantly more polygons like in the face in areas here. Like if we look at the end of the, um, this mustache hot dog looking hot dog. And if I was to drop this back down to like 45%, we, so, we should see fewer Right? There's a lot fewer polygons along here. Um, and 
you can also do a count. Um, you can set up density maps, which we're not going to talk about right now. Um, and then there's also this idea of flow splines. And for a model like this, it doesn't necessarily make too much sense. But what the way that you work with that, um, Cinema 4D actually in their manual has a pretty good description of how to use it. Um, but what you do is you turn on your snapping tools and you would draw a spline that basically says, I want there to be an edge. Like I want the polygons to more or less make a certain shape. So I could create like a circle polygon here and they would all be wrapped around that and reformed based on that. And sometimes that's really useful um, depending on your model. Um, if we, if I was to right click here and just go to show help on flow splines, um, it actually here tells you about the snapping um, and it shows you some examples, right? So this is what the mesh looked like, which was nightmarish. Um, <laughs> before they modified it. And this is just how it was modified with the remesher. And then I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I'm gonna try and zoom in a touch. Um, but here there's a spline that they've attached to the surface. That's this curve. And so you can see how it's modified the way the mesh is set up. And I'm not sure if that's actually useful. <laughs> the way they've done it is actually any more useful for this model, um, but they show you just a couple settings and it's just another additional option where maybe you really it, it might make a big impact in the way that your um, that your model folds or bends um, or the way that the texture is applied okay so that's the end of this tutorial it's a pretty quick one um, but I just wanted to um, yeah, to make your lives a little bit easier using the Z remesher, which is a pretty fantastic tool.